Hi everyone, Kiel here. Today I want to make a video to talk about the tool that I use to create data art pieces. And I talked about it in the previous video. Uh, so if you didn't watch it, it's called Seven Essential Data Art Tools. And today we're going to talk about cables. And I talked previously, cables, what is cables? Cables is a visual programming in the browser, meaning you can have interactive data visualization or data artwork that you can do without having to type a line of code. So I didn't say without coding because it's still a way you have to you know, think logically, but there's no need to code anything if you, uh, if you only want to play with the blocks that the cables uh, tool give you, you can and you can create amazing things. So today I want to make a quick introduction uh, to using cables and you know, then move on to a more complete, I would say, project and see how we can go from there, okay? So first, when you want to you know, start with cables, you basically have to go to cables.gl, I'll put the URL below, and you will reach this particular page. So, we'll be, so you have to reg register, create an account, and then you will go to this page here. Uh, and so the, well, you have uh, many different, uh, uh, what they call patches, which are like projects made with the software. You know, you're like top of the month, uh, latest patches, and you can, uh, what the cool thing about this is, uh, with this tool is you can always explore how people created their work. So you can get inspired, you know, learn all the techniques that you need. You also are on top, you know, the learn a tab where you have all the operators. So all the building blocks that we are going to use to create our patches, examples, some documentation and video tutorials. I invite you to check those up. Uh, so, it's like a YouTube channel on like dedicated, made by the cables team. So you have tons of different, you know, get started and advanced stuff. Uh, today, I'm going to make my own uh, introduction to the framework. And then we're going to move on to this project where we create the gradient. Here you have like three different colors based on the weather of your current location. So this is how it looks. And this is what we're going to create uh, together. So, but before we, we reach to this point, let's start. You're here in the cable pages. Uh, you can go to create, create empty project. You click here and voila. This is the, the page you're going to see on your screen. I'm like, cropping on the right part, but it, this is basically uh, what you're going to have. You can resize the windows here and it's going to be very empty. So you say, okay, now I created a new project. Maybe I should just change it, the name. You can go here, patch setting and put a name. So let's call it, uh, I don't know, test project, very original, save it. And first thing you notice is that you can have a different license. So the code can be open sourced or, you know, it's all right reserves. You don't want to share it with people. Now you can also make the, the patch public, meaning that anyone on the web can ex access it, or you can just generate a secret URL. So you can only share the, the things that you did with uh, like selected people, peoples, you can have collaborators, you have the different versions that you created here, but so far we have nothing. So everything is empty. How do we start creating stuff in cables? Well, it's very similar to all the uh, node based visual programming tools there, there, there are out there. You have, uh, as I talked earlier in the video, Houdini, touch designer, four V's, you know, VVVV, um, max MSP. It's always the same thing. It's always the same uh, shortcut. So here in cables, you can either press the tab key, or you can press the escape button. So I'm going to show you the, the, the things that I do with my, uh, my um, keyboard. So in the settings somewhere, you can actually uh, change the, the, the settings for the patch. You also have tools here and you have a common palette where you have more settings. You can also go here, my preference. And here you have like minimap, uh, you can straight change with like the theme. But what I want to activate is here is the presentation mode. So that you see what I type on my key. So if I press the tab key here, if I reload the page, sorry, and I press the tab key, you would, should now see uh, the things that I type here, right? So I, if I press the tab key, this is what happens. This new window opens and it says, okay, search for up, up means operator or like a node, a block, code block that we're gonna use to create visuals. And so you can search multiple words at once add spaces between words for a better search result, and then you can move on with your keyboard. So the first thing we, you need to do in like old patches is to put the main loop. Main, what is a main loop? Right, so this is like the main loop block. 
what it does basically is, is calling the browser because you know the browser browser refreshes your pages 60 times per second. This is like built in the all your browser, Chrome, uh, Safari, Firefox, Opera, and so forth. And basically you say, okay, what we're gonna put below here in this trigger node is gonna be refreshed 60 times per second. So if I want to change the background, if I want to rotate a cube or anything, this has to, the code below will be executed 60 times per second. I can change the FPS and put it lower, maybe 30 times per second, but to have the maximum performance and the maximum smoothness, you should um, keep it like this. So I have this block here on my screen. I can move it with my left click. I can you know, pan in the view with the right click. If I press it, I can zoom with the mouse, okay? And what we notice here is we have like, like colors on top, like different blocks here, which are actually for the inputs of this particular block. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight out inputs. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, three outputs here: trigger, width, and height, which are actually the width and height of this particular canvas here. So this block will run everything that is below it 60 times per second. If you're not sure, if you are familiar with JavaScript, you want to actually look at what this block does, you can go here on this particular menu and click View Opcode, and you have the full code here. So this is actually this particular block is actually accounts for 200 lines of code here with text to like shaders as we're going to see camera and everything so when you put this block even though it looks very tiny it sometimes it's like a very big amount of code so this is the power of cables you put some blocks here you compose them and you don't really you know get into the details of how it's implemented as long as you have the logic there you can create amazing visuals so let's continue okay i have this loop nothing happens now of course it's just running, but there's nothing to run. So maybe the thing that we should start now is to change the color of the background. So to do that, there's another node called clear color. And it's written here, Set, sets all the clear pixels to one color, used to change the background color. I press enter, I put this node here, and you notice that because they are not connected, this node is not activated. So nothing is being run, it's still black. Now, if I connect the trigger, the yellow one to this one, render. Now, this yellow, this clear color node is activated 60 times per second. So here the node has four different, like five different inputs. One is the render, the rest is red value, green value, blue value, and the alpha value. So I can either, you know, press the left, uh, left click and, you know, drag, scroll left and right with my mouse to change one particular value. I can also click here and I open this uh, color picker when I can just change with my mouse. And uh, I can also, as you can imagine, these are numbers, right? That you can change, like they go between zero and one. So if I want to change the red value, I can play it with my mouse or I can drop another node, tab number, which has the same type, right? Connect it to this clear color. And now this number here drives the R, so the red parameter. So if I change this, and of course it, it's bound between zero and one. So if I go above, it doesn't make any sense. So let me show you, I put everything at zero. The red value is zero, it's all black, right? Now, if I want to gradually, I can just play with my mouse and you'll see that I put more and more red on screen till I reach one. That's the maximum R like red value. And so this number here drives, because it's connected, drive this particular parameter here. And this is basically uh, how cable works. You would have nodes and different inputs and you move the inputs, maybe you have a timer, maybe you play with the parameters by hand or the user can change them. And this is basically how the patches work. There's always the one main loop and everything goes below it and you change the parameters. Once you're happy with your patch, you can just save it, Command S, or Control S, now if you're on PC and Mac, don't forget to do it because if it crashes and then reload the page, if you didn't for save, then you're gonna lose some uh, of the nodes that have been created for you. So now we have a clear color. I can change with this particular number. If you want to make a comment, you can put it here. Maybe you say change red value. Uh, you can also rename the op like here, and you call it R. Uh, I would suggest that you keep it to uh, like to keep the original name so that people understand what this is. 
but you can put a comment if you want on next to it or you can do this just put it uh, next to it but uh, you keep the name of the of the node so that people can really understand it, like right away if you're familiar with the, all the operators that there is in, there are in cables what it is so how many operators we have in cables actually a ton of them right if you don't believe me you can you know go to here each each uh, category here is like um, uh, I would say a global category and each of them you have like different nodes the most uh, I think the most uh, the biggest category is the array one so it's all the operations you can do in an array add some multiply divide and like all the stuff that you see here and I think there's like I don't know in total in cables maybe a thousand different ops so it's pretty big as a library and it will take time of course to to know everything but you can always like go back to if you don't find any operator you can create your own that's a good very cool point so if you you're pretty sure that there's nothing that exists to do exactly what you want you can just code a new op and it will create your own block and then you can you know paste it exactly as before but most of the times like the block exists so you have to you know try to be creative with the way what you type here to search for the, the exact operation that you need and also otherwise get inspired by you know looking at other patches for instance so what do we have so far we have a main loop and a clear color right so maybe we should uh, I don't know put an object on the screen so we have a better idea of how it works uh, maybe I want to you know this usual we put the rectangle or a sphere maybe a rectangle is easier so or a cube I would say in 3d so I'm just searching for a cube now and I have draw a cube okay and first thing, warning, this op cannot do anything without at least connecting those ports. Render, the yellow one. So you always need to include this in the loop so that it gets refreshed 60 times per second. Let me connect it. Now I have a cube on screen. But my cube like, doesn't really look like much, right? It's, it looks more like, um, like um, I don't know, like a rectangle. And there's no like 3D effect or anything. So it, even though it says cube, I feel that this is just a rectangle. And this comes from the fact that we don't have any camera, right? The camera is put in front of the cube so that it looks like very flat. But now if I had a way to have a camera that, 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 was, that allowed me to go around the cube or to move things in space, then I will really see I would, the third dimension, right? So let me, before we do that, let me just play with the parameters of my cube here. I can play with the width, with the length and the height. So still looks like a rectangle to me, but we'll, we'll change that in a few seconds. Let's add a camera. So the most uh, common camera we use in 3D, either you can you move your camera by hand or like it's, maybe it's driven by parameters. But if you just want to rotate around stuff, we use a camera called orbit control. So you are in orbit around the center point of your 3D scene and you can change the parameters as well. So let me put it down, orbit control. Okay, I need to, you know, put it into the, the, the loop. So let me put this just below him, it, like this. I have tons of different parameters, right? By default, it's already like very well, we're very good. I can just now click here with my left button and you'll start to turn around here. So now I can, you know, see that it's a cube, but it's not very well lit, right? I don't have any shading, so it, everything feels flat. I, I, see a bit of 3d but you know it would be better if i could really see with the like uh, lights and shadow and really see all my cubes so to do that we would need to add to our cube what we call the material a material is what it's just a way that the gpu you know renders the different lightning conditions the surface maybe it's more you put a texture maybe it's more reflective maybe it's like it looks like glass maybe it looks like dirt maybe it looks like a metal or maybe it's just like a plain color so you need a way to, you know, put this texture, this material onto the 3D objects so that the GPU can, you know, uh, you know, create the pixels so that you see it. And in this shader, you can pipe different textures, uh, what we call displacement maps, uh, you know, take into account different light sources. And so how the light reflects on the surface and, you know, render uh, the pixel for us to see. The, there are tons of different materials. So Let's type material and see what cable has for us. Okay, material, IBLM material, phone material, 
basic material, a material without shading. So we, we, what we would like to have here is a bit of shading. So we see, you know, all the faces of our cube. You have different, the, I think the, the simplest one is called, it's the Lambert material, a symbol shaded material. Okay, so let me click here. And because this has to be put on the GPU before we render the, the, the surface or the mesh, you need to put the material before the cube. So before the, the shape here, I put it there and, and see now automatically we start to see something that are closer to the camera. So they are a bit, uh, they have a light source that comes a bit from the camera. And, you know, now we see a bit of the perspective and we can, you know, rotate and move around and see our cube. So, which is not a cube anymore, but uh, because we changed the width and height and length. But if I, you don't like this color, you can just change the color here on the material and, you know, start to, to see around, to see what, what it is. I can go back to my cube, change it, change its length, position. And now we really have something in 3D. So it's not, imagine this is just very one, two, three, four, five nodes. If I remove this, it seems very trivial to do, right? We just put five nodes here. But this is not that easy to, to do, even if you had to code it for yourself with all the shadings, the camera, the color. And you know, one of the, the real strength of the visual node based programming is that it's very easy to experiment. Maybe now you don't want to have a cube. Maybe I want to, you know, play with a sphere. So let me type a sphere. Here with an H, put it there and connect it. So, okay, the sphere now is, is big, so it takes, uh, pre, uh, it goes over my cube. But the cool thing here is that you can compose objects, of course. But if you want to experiment, I don't need to drop all the presets that I had for my cube. I can just disconnect the link here, which is a right click on the, uh, delete the, the, the link. It's just a right click with my mouse on the, the here in the node. And you see, now I have the sphere, but I didn't lose my cube. So I can very easily experiment, you know, try things, reconnect them, change the how things connect. If I just press the right button, I can just connect, drop it back, connect, drop it here again, you know, and experiment. And this would be quite annoying to do if you had to program it, because you have to do like comment the code or create two functions, you know, and try to each of the time go back to the code and see what the result and execute it each time. Here, it's very easy to have like different chains, you know, like from the top down, different trees of nodes and try to you know, experiment with both of them. I want to change the parameter here. I just need to drag, you know, drag my mouse on the left and the right instead of you know, having to type anything or create an interface, uh, you know, to move and create for each parameter a slider, which you can do in cables. But here it's already built in in the UI here. So it's pretty uh, easy to do. So I can play with my sphere here. You know, a sphere is actually not a sphere. It's just always a polygon. So if I can, if I reduce the number of slices and stacks, it will look very, uh, you know, low PS1 graphics. But sometimes if you are very far like this, it doesn't really matter to have a, a, like a like very crude geometry because you're so far away, you don't see the difference. But this is of course better for your computer because it's less polygons, less triangles to create. So it's more efficient. It depends on if you want to look close, of course, this is like, doesn't really look good. But if you're in, you are from afar, you can tune all the parameters you want like this. So now I want to go back to my cube and just, uh, I can put both at one, at, at one if, I, if I want, but uh, let's just remove it. And then because I'm, I like what I have right now, I can just save my patch. Control S. And I think we're done for here, this video. It's the our first uh, 3D cube uh, in cables. The next video, we're gonna talk about how to create deck the data from an API, external API, and you know change the background automatically. But uh, I think for a quick introduction to cables, if you have everything you need, don't forget to you know watch the YouTube videos from the cables channel, read, of course, documentation, or follow this particular channel because we're gonna create more and more uh, tutorials as uh, the channel progresses. If you have any question, leave a comment. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.